for our final circular motion scenario, we are going to look at one of my favorite examples, and that is the circular pendulum. So here, uh, one of my favorite toys, this flying pig, is flying in a circle after being hung from the ceiling by a cord. That tension is providing its circular motion. So in this video, we're gonna look at how that is solved for and what we can do to figure out the tension of that cable. All right, so let's dive in. Again, here are the equations that we have in our data booklet in subtopic 6.1. Uh, the equation that we're gonna care about the most is this last one uh, for the force of centripetal force, the force pointing in a circle. Now, a pendulum circle uh, can be defined using a free body diagram, just like we saw before, but that free body diagram, just like the others are constantly changing depending on where the center of the circle is. Uh, so here, uh, this animation actually does a really nice job of showing the forces that are at play and kind of what this looks like in three dimensions here. So you've got a tension force that's pulling uh, along with the rope. Um, so whatever angle that happens to be and uh, the force of gravity, mg, pointing down. But you see, you can also break that tension force into components um, going up with the sine and the cosine of the angle. And it's that sine of the angle, that horizontal component that's pointing towards the center. So we're going to see that here um, in a, a less movie sort of way. Um, we'll draw this out in a stationary diagram. So here we have a way of drawing this pendulum circle. Um, you'll notice here as a length of a string, a height, a radius uh, of the circle that it's tracing. There's also a tension that's moving at an angle represented here by theta, and then the force of gravity, mg, pulling down. We can draw this as a free body di diagram separately here, um, just to clean it up a little bit so we only have forces that are acting. We know that the tension force is at whatever angle uh, this is showing, and that the um, force of gravity, mass times gravity, is pointing down. Now, as we saw before, uh, at the very beginning of our forces unit, anytime we have a force at an angle like this, it's really helpful for us to find the components of that force. Um, the, the components of the force that are either parallel or perpendicular to the other forces that are acting. So in this case, uh, part of this tension is in the y direction and part is in the x direction. Um, overall though, we have a centripetal force that's pointing towards the center of the circle because this object isn't moving up or down. Uh, the only force must be moving it inward. Um, so FG, FC is going to be really important. We can then say that the net force is equal to FC. And since there is an X and a Y component, we can swap out that tension that we saw here with the X component, the part that's horizontal, and the part that's vertical, the Y component. And now we can start to see things look similar to what we saw in previous examples. We can see that TY is equal to FG. Um, that it is not accelerating upward or downward. It's in this horizontal plane the entire time. So the Y part, the vertical uh, for part of that force has to be equal and opposite to the vertical part going down. That was mass times gravity. So we can cancel those out and we're left with only one force pointing in the direction of FC. And that's the tension force in the X direction, TX. So we can say that TX is also equal to that centripetal force which was equal to the net force. So let's look at this as a, a full example. Let's say, what is the centripetal force required to cause a 0.12 kilogram mass to swing in a horizontal circle with the string at an angle of 30 degrees? Uh, we'll just draw the free body diagram overlaid on top of this. Um, FG is pointing down. And then I'm just gonna split this up right away because I know I'm gonna have to. Uh, TX into the center of the circle ty going straight up and the centripetal force uh, pointing towards the center there which means i know just in my uh just kind of off to the side here that the net force is the same as the centripetal force which in this case is going to be all uh because of tx is the only one in that direction so if i'm trying to find the centripetal force it means i'm really looking for tx here that's that's my goal because once i have tx I have FC. All right, I don't know a whole lot uh, else about this angle or the, the tension force in general. 
Um, so since I don't know tension force, uh, I can't really go straight from the tension force to the, the horizontal component. So first let's start with what I have. I know um, that this is my triangle, that the tension force is here, but if I know ty, I could probably find tx based on this angle here, because the tangent of the angle is going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the tangent of 30 is equal to tx divided by ty, so katoa, and toa tangent is opposite over, um, sorry, opposite over adjacent. I think I said opposite over, over hypotenuse, tx over ty. Solving that for tx means that if I know ty, uh, it's just ty times the tangent of the angle, that 30 degrees. So now let's figure out how we can find ty. I know that this isn't moving up or down. Uh, so if I can find fg, I know ty. fg is just mass times gravity. I'm given the mass is 0.12 kilograms. Uh, gravity is 9.81, which means ty is 1.18 newtons. Um, plugging that in for my equation here, tx has to be equal to 1.18 times the tangent of 30. I'm making sure that I'm in degree mode on my calculator. That comes to 0.68 newtons. Um, and then again, that's what I was looking at here. 0.68 newtons is tx, which means that the uh, centripetal force is 0.68 newtons as well. And it's possible that I might ask you to go further. Uh, in this case, if I wanted you to go further and find like the angular velocity or the linear velocity, I would also need to know the radius of this circle, um, which would mean I would need to know something more about the string, either the length of the string or um, how high this ball is off um, or away from the ceiling. But be careful here. Um, there are actually two triangles at play, and it's really easy to get them crossed depending on the examples that you're looking at. There is a triangle here just traced out just in distances, the length of the string, um, how uh, far away it is from the, the ceiling where, where it's being suspended, and the radius. These are all measurements of distance or length. Um, they are measured in meters. And the angle here is theta. The triangle that we drew was actually a triangle of forces. It's the tension force the vertical and the horizontal forces. These are all units of forces, which is Newtons. These are similar triangles. Um, they both have theta as their angle, um, but please do not mix them together. You can't have a triangle where you've got like the radius here and the tension here, because then you are not dealing with the same units. Um, and that just doesn't work. You can't have a triangle where one side is measured in meters, one side is measured in newtons, and another side measured in something else. So just be mindful of the triangle that you are drawing. To wrap us up, let's look at this alongside our other two scenarios. We looked at the rotor earlier. The rotor has a force of gravity going down, force of friction keeping you up on the wall. They had to be equal. Um, force of gravity and the normal reaction force for the car going around a turn were equal and opposite. And now we have the force of gravity going down. All of these had FG going down. And the force supporting it was the vertical part of the tension here of this cable. So those are equal and opposite. If I want to know the force that is moving me in a circle, uh, it's basically whatever force is remaining after these two cancel out. So for the rotor, that was the normal reaction force pointing perpendicular to the surface uh, to give me my centripetal force. For the car going around a cur curve, that was the force of friction pointing towards the center uh, to equal the centripetal force. And now for this um, ball on a string, we have that force, uh, the tension force uh, in the x direction, Tx, is equal to my centripetal force. These equations are not in your data booklet, nor should they, because they are not universal equations. These are relationships based on the free body diagram. If you can draw this diagram for each of these scenarios, you should be able to easily see these examples um, and these equalities and from there build off to solve the problem that you're looking at. So the takeaway for this lesson, you should be able to draw a free body diagram and solve a problem in circular motion is produced by components of an angled tension force like um, a circle, circular pendulum.